This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Spouses Talking Houses with husband and wife real estate team Jennifer and Brian Frost. Everything you want to know about buying, selling, investing, and owning property. So let's get real about real estate. Welcome back to Spouses Talking Houses. He's Brian. She's Jennifer. And our guest today is Alan Rice. Hi, Alan. Hi, Alan. Hey, good afternoon. How are you guys? Good, good. thanks. So today we're going to get real about real estate school and how to obtain a real estate license and learn what you need to do to, to come into this profession as a career. Oh, I have to have a license? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily it's current. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Alan, just tell us a little little bit about yourself. Uh, let's see. Well, I've got a brief 90-minute uh, PowerPoint of my <laughs> life. That I've, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, I got into the real estate business back in 1985. I was uh, brought up as a teacher when I first got out of school, but got into real estate in 1985. And it has been a, a very uh, interesting and uh, uh, happy career for me and uh, have have worked for a number of companies over the course of time and, and had the advantage of, uh, of being in education. Uh, I did a lot of teaching uh, for pre-license and also for CEUs. And so it, it enabled me to have uh, my passion for teaching. It gave me an avenue to, uh, to uh, use that in real estate, which has been uh, extremely satisfactory. And I still do that today. I do a lot of workshops for folks all over the country. So Yeah, and you do some professional coaching as well, don't you? I do. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I coach uh, real estate teams uh, and home services professionals, uh, mortgage companies, title companies, and even attorneys and, and uh, other businesses that aren't necessarily home services centered. So again, it's, uh, it's been a, a great uh, mixture of, of opportunities for me over the course of just 35 years years, exactly, uh, yeah. which uh, has been great. Well, I'm thinking that, that you and I met through real estate sometime in the 80s. We did. Yes, yeah. indeed. I don't yeah. th- I don't we were both, I think, uh, working in the relocation uh, yeah. parts of real estate and uh, yeah. another great, great opportunity. So That's back when you were at Norwood and yeah. I think I was yeah. at Dallamore at the time. Um, yeah, I don't yeah, think I, so. I don't think I'd gone to Carlson yet. But anyway, these uh, are all names that nobody knows anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, who the thunk it? Right. Exactly. What happened to that time? So what happened oh, to that? Um, so before we get real about real estate school, I just always like to talk a little bit about the realtor lifestyle because we managed to uh, work seven days a week, but we also managed to fit in our our play and the rest of our life in between. Then on a good day, right? Uh, we try. <laughs> we try. So what we've been up to lately, which has been a much bigger project than I expected, is puppy proofing. Because I am finally going to get a puppy. Yay! Can you put in Uh-oh. a sound effect, Ben? <laughs> Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now we're looking at everything. Puppy is only going to be on the, the main floor of the house because we have a, a bedroom on that floor. And um, I... I'm looking at everything that is three feet or below as danger zone. Um, it's all chewable or breakable. Hey, yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so poor Brian's been moving furniture. Oh yeah. Um, Jennifer is in, uh, you're in for a great surprise and how overwhelming this is going to be, but we're going to, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, no house is a not it's not a home until you have a dog. Right? There we go. A house is not a home until you have a dog. <laughs> so for twenty eight years, I've been lobbying for a dog, and somebody I finally caved. Somebody said that to him, <laughs> and he came home and said, "Yeah, you can get a dog." So, um, so off we go. There we go. What have you been up to, Alan? Well, you know, it's funny you say that because we we just got a new puppy uh, nice. <laughs> about uh, six weeks ago. How's your so uh, we're we're going through the bite marks on my arms are just starting to heal. So oh, uh, no. uh, they're not bite marks; they're nibble marks. Yeah. But uh, yes. it's going to be a fun time. We had a, a dog for sixteen and a half years, and you're right, Brian. Uh, you know, it just didn't seem like the same place without uh, someone scampering around. Right. And uh, so you'll you'll have a good time. I'm I'm having a good time. It definitely brings you back to uh, 
to reality and humility for sure. But it's, yeah. uh, well, at it's least, been fun. at least you're not potty training in the snow, which is what I think I'm going to be doing in a month from now. So. Yes, she will be doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at, at three yeah, in the morning. Sure. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to keep a bottle of wine by the bed, I think. Yeah. Well, if the dog's going to be get it, getting up every two hours, you might as well too, right? Yeah, exactly. There you go. I don't sleep through the night anyway. So, um, all right. Excellent. So, so Alan, the reason why I, um, wanted to talk to you about real estate school is because um, you, you're you're starting a new partnership and I thought maybe you could start off by just telling us a little bit about um, T-R-E-L-G. Sure, yeah. Um, so we have just uh, started into a new partnership with a, a company by the name of the Real Estate Learning Group. So that's where the, and we're, we're great with acronyms, right? We're an acronym world. So um, it's Trellig, which stands for the Real Estate Learning Group. And they are an education company out of the state of Maine, centered in the state of Maine. And they're, uh, they're folks that we know really well, and have, they've got a great uh, reputation for delivering high-quality uh, educational uh, experiences for people, both in terms of pre-license and also continuing ed. And so um, they wanted to grow, and we wanted to grow in terms of uh, our our ability to, to provide um, a pathway for people to enjoy real estate as a career. So we're uh, combining with them, and uh, we'll be offering pre-license and continuing education for licensed professionals uh, through them. And uh, it's a great combination. They've got a wonderful uh, learning platform, easy to use, um, easy to register. What I like about it uh, is that they archive uh, all the information so that uh, a licensee, someone who needs to document that they took a class here or there or whatever, <laughs> they keep all of that. Oh, my goodness. And, How uh, many times yeah, do you get I calls mean, from agents saying, I need my slip, I'm renewing my license, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, of course, as instructors, you know, the, the obligation fell upon us to maintain that for a period of four years. So, you know, if, when the licensee didn't, uh, <laughs> wasn't able to find their, their uh, certificate, then all of a sudden I'm looking for it. And uh, this way it's all archived. People can have access to it. And it's just, uh, it's great. And it also is a platform where um, we're offering what I call evergreen courses, particularly for continuing ed, so that if you can't sleep uh, one night and you want to do a, a continuing education course instead of taking uh, a sleeping pill, then you can watch it <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning and uh, and complete the the exam and uh, and you're going to pick up you know three CEUs. Well, that's always been an issue too because uh, not everybody in real estate is in real estate full time, and sometimes they're working around school schedules or work schedules or you know, uh, they travel a lot. And so being able to, to choose your time to take that educational content is really important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it really, you know, it's consumer friendly in that now the, the class is available when the student is ready, as opposed to when the teacher is ready. And you know, the old saying, uh, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. And so now with evergreen classes that, uh, that's that's the practice. Yeah, all you need is an internet connection. And, that's right. um, you know, I, I'm obviously with KW Metro. Brian and I are too. You're affiliated with KW Metro as part of our leadership. But this is a partnership with the school so that people do not have to be a Keller Williams agent or be planning to be a Keller Williams agent, correct? No, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's an important uh, point. And I'm glad you brought that up, Jennifer, is that, you know, we want to provide uh, a, a great educational experience. And um, we also realize that there are many choices of affiliation, um, whether it's as you're coming into the business or even as you are proceeding through the business and you're doing CEUs, and so uh, we really are committed to the educational experience, and it's not tied to any kind of obligation for, for affiliating with us. It's, it's, it's pure, if you will. Yeah, Good. yeah. And I, I, know, I know plenty of agents who are, uh, you know, just basically they hold their own license or they work for a very small firm. And so for them to be able to plug into this is excellent. Yeah. And not everybody who comes through the pre-licensing training 
is going to have the same career career path. They're going to all have right. different needs and abilities, right. right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, we we also take the philosophy that when we all kind of improve our skill level through education, it makes transactions that we have together will go much more smoothly. Not only for us, but let's remember we're doing this for the consumer, so that right. you know it's a better experience for them in a transaction. And so that's that's really where we see the benefit to the industry. Oh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the more professional the agents are, and the better they communicate. Yeah. Uh, is this going to be focused on New England, or is it going to be national, or as far as the? Yeah. So great question, Brian. So um, obviously it'll be um, you know available from anywhere, but it right now our. Um, our focus is on the state of Maine and New Hampshire, and then we see ourselves moving into other neighboring states because a lot of a lot of agents these days, particularly in our area, you know, we we cross over the border. I mean, sure. we're sort of in a tri-state little yeah. little juncture, yep. and so we know um, you know many agents hold three licenses. They hold Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, and each state has its own requirement particularly for continuing ed. So, you know, Maine is 21 hours. Um, um, you know, New Hampshire is 21 hours, 15 hours. Yeah. Oops, <laughs> uh, and Massachusetts is 12. And so to the degree that we can offer courses where you, you have what I'm going to call credits in a couple of states, right now you don't have somebody having to do, you know, 60 hours because they, they hold three licenses. Sure. Yeah, I often end up doing my Massachusetts one separate because I have the ability um, and the luxury of going to so many in person, at least prior to COVID, New Hampshire continuing ed that's held either at the board or at our office or, or something like that. And then I end up not having enough Massachusetts credits, and I usually will right. take those online, and it's the same content. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, now let's talk about pre-licensing that, that path to, you know, getting a real estate license. Yeah. So, you know, we see uh, a lot of people who develop an interest in learning about how real estate works. And so our pre-license experience really has to do with, uh, helping people get and pass the test in the respective state. And, um, that obviously is a requirement for, for in order to qualify for the, and, and obtain a license. Um, and so what that does, it really is what I call uh, the, the content is, and focus is really law-centered. Right. And, you know, a very important element, obviously, because we don't want to have anyone out there doing things that that uh, are not consistent with the with the laws, so it's really uh, law centered, and uh, we we don't uh, teach to the test. But obviously, the goal is to get people to uh, be in a position to pass the test successfully. Once that happens, then then there is an education experience with various companies um, relative to how they want to conduct the business. And so that's kind of a different, um, you know, focus once you become licensed. But the benefit of pre-licensure is, um, you know, you get a great understanding about what the requirements are, um, what the expectations are in terms of behavior with, uh, with other agents and how, um, uh, you know, agency laws work, how representation works. And so we know a lot of people who take pre-license who don't necessarily end up in brokerage. They right. might end up in some other aspect of, of uh, the industry, the home services industry. Even people who are going to become developers or want to do um, even, you know, smaller projects or even flips on a house-by-house -house basis, um, they have a better understanding as to the requirements and expectations from a legal perspective. So there's a lot of advantages to taking the, the pre-licensed class, even if you don't end up going into brokerage. Exactly. And there are people who might go into property management or there, are, I always exactly. will see some investors who come to real estate school because they want to, they want to have that extra knowledge. I, I, one of the metaphors I'll frequently use about real estate is the restaurant industry. Um, I feel there's a lot of similarities. And one of them, you know, one of them is basically when you open a restaurant, you need to be a good cook, but you also need to conform with all the health standards. 
and that's the pre-licensing for us is pretty much consumer protection and understanding the underlying thing about deeds and real estate and how the legal aspect of it works. But it doesn't teach you how to cook a great meal, right? Which is right. which is more of that training that you're talking about that you get after you get licensed. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You know, it's interesting too. There are so many, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, correlations between restaurant business and and uh, real estate, including the fact that you're going to be working every night and weekend. No, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, good correlations. That is so true. <laughs> it is so true. Um, so you know, I I have to say I took my real estate exam back in 1986. So how how has technology <laughs> changed the process? Well, uh, technology has changed the pro process uh, significantly and to, to our advantage. And when I say our advantage, to someone who's looking to get licensed. Mm -hmm. So now te technology, uh, you know, we provide the pre-licensed class um, in this kind of environment or what I'll call a blended kind of environment because some people, you know, they want to be, quote, in the room, um, you know, as as opposed to being in the Zoom room, if right. you will. Yeah. So, uh, but it really enables people who are a little more portable uh, can can uh, have access to the to the class. And the other part too is again, you know, it's recorded. There, people can review information. Sure. If sometimes I don't know about you, but occasionally, if I'm a participant in a class, my mind might wander or drift a bit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to point to uh, Brian. You know, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> well, that's why I'm taking appraisal courses and real estate courses at the same time. So, you know. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it enables you to, to, you know, be able to replay. And, right. uh, and so that's, that's a big advantage as well. So, um, yeah, technology has really been beneficial to the consumer uh, in a lot of ways. And in, to a student, uh, it really provides the ability to, to be very thorough and, and have the information available when they need it. So yeah. it's, it, it's a great uh, you know, and to, and to be certified to give the course and instruct the course in New Hampshire, you have to show that 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 your um, students have been in class for forty hours, and Correct. and yeah. and that there's a certain amount of content that's been covered. And when we were doing it in person, you know, sometimes I would be hosting a like a continuing ed class, and there was a cutoff. If you were fifteen minutes late, you weren't going to get credit. And there would right. be there would be people calling me frantic. You know, my my kid was sick. It's snowing. Whatever. Um, I need the credits. And I'm like, if you don't do the full three hours, we the state's not going to allow us to give you the credits. Right. Um, so hopefully, right. by being able to dial in um, and have replays, that's gonna that's gonna alleviate some of that pain for people. Absolutely. And you know, when we think about, I mean, when we think about New Hampshire, and we oftentimes will just in our minds, we'll be thinking about Southern New Hampshire, which now, you know, Southern New Hampshire is conquered South and even into the, into the lakes region. But, you know, there are a lot of people beyond that North of that, who, who also want to have the opportunity to get into real estate. And, you know, previously or prior to, to all these changes, it would mean, you know, driving, you know, one, two, three hours, right. you know, sure. in the yeah. snow and then, yeah. you know, yeah. back home again. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it would, be a real uh, uh, obstacle for a lot of people, and now technology enables us to uh, to deliver it and provide it, and they have access to it without putting their their life at risk. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and without maybe having to get somebody to babysit the dog. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you don't even have to wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nor nor does the instructor. Right. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to lower my screen. <laughs> uh, so, you know, one, so one other thing, though, I do want to go back to Jennifer because I didn't mention it. And that is um, the other uh, group that we're seeing uh, having access to pre-license with are people who are interested in being uh, in a support role with agents right. or agent teams. Right. And like so, admin. you know, we're seeing an influx of. Uh, people coming to our classes who are going to be an administrative assistant, a transaction coordinator, and they're having the background and the information around pre-licensure or, or what is required by law really is a big advantage. 
So just didn't want that to go by the wayside. And, and that's actually a, a really an excellent point because if if Brian and I have an assistant and that person is not licensed, they can't even answer a question for one of our buyers about how many bedrooms are in a house because that's something only a licensee can do is give information about the property. Right. Um, so, so the easiest thing to do is make sure that everybody on your support team is licensed, um, right? Or at least has that knowledge of where the boundaries are. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you can see that 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 person can really be a a, a pivot point if there's a, a complication and all of a sudden, you know, a showing needs to occur or a company a a, a buyer on on some portion of the of the road of the path. A licensed support person is going to be in a better position to do that. Sure. Yeah, I have been seeing more of that. That's correct. So I'm one of the um, uh, volunteers uh, for for teaching some of the modules, and we're going to. I'll have you talk a little bit about the modular nature of the class, but I just wanted yeah. to look over and give people an idea of what types of things are covered. So, um, uh, real property and the law. Okay how you can hold interest in real estate, how you hold title to a property, um, how land is described, how title is transferred, um, how real estate brokerage works and what different types of agency there are and different types of licenses and responsibilities there are, um, client representation agreements, going through the purchase and sale agreement and the real estate contracts, which is, by the way, my favorite thing to talk about. Like we, we have so many discussions about the New Hampshire purchase and sale agreement between agents um, yeah. be, because you don't really realize the nuances till you have a question that's uh, about a certain transaction that you're going through. And then you go look and read and all of a sudden you see it in a different light. Um, real estate financing, you have to really understand real estate financing um, to properly represent your buyer. And... Um, you know, what is, what is the government involvement in that financing? How does the closing work? What is a real estate appraisal? What is the role of the appraiser? Um, taxes, property taxes, leases, property management. Big one, fair housing. Um, and that's been in the spotlight more than ever this year, which I'm, I'm pleased about personally. Um, yeah. You know, environmental issues, developing a property. So it's an overview, but it really touches on a broad spectrum of the whole real estate industry. Definitely. And, you know, you made some great points. Uh, you know, there are, there are things that, that sort of come to the surface in terms of, of focus. And, you know, with the, with the demographics in, in our area, um, you know, how we hold property has become more and more important, whether it's in the form of a trust or mm -hmm. uh, LLC and yeah. how that works with estate planning. And sometimes it, it is important just from the perspective of people end up receiving a piece of property and, you know, they're getting it either through an estate or through, you know, some kind of estate planning mechanism. And, um, and so that becomes a, a very important element around how to sell it, what has to happen, and so forth. And your point about fair housing, um, you know, is another good one in terms of making sure that we are uh, very clear about the expectations relative to that for the consumers. Yeah. I mean, consumer protection is the main reason why the state licenses real estate agents in the first place. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They, yeah. they want to know that the, that the consumer is not being taken advantage of, that there's a certain level of professionalism, and that mm -hmm. if the consumer has an issue, they can go to the broker of record who's responsible for the actions of that licensee. Correct. And, you know, it's interesting you bring that up, Jennifer, because even with continuing education, that's the underlying theme and, and really what we have to, have to kind of prove or substantiate when we put content together and send it in for to be approved as a continuing ed class. The question that we have to answer is, how will this benefit the consumer? It's right. not, you know, to benefit the, the professional. Now, if it happens to benefit both, that's okay. But we really have to, um, you know, demonstrate that we, this the content the uh, is a benefit to the consumer primarily. Yeah, yeah. You can't get accredited to teach um, for licensing or continuing ed. You know, to, in order 
to teach a class that'll improve an agent's sales reach. That ha that's not protecting the consumer at all. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, so explain how the how the modulars how the modules work as far as doing the pre licensing. So what we will do is uh, it's it's set up in those topics that you um, you outlined. And so each one is, is somewhat standalone. However, what we do is to, to make it clear to the participants, the students, how they are tied together. So each of the modules are four hours in length, and um, we, we go over those particular aspects. And then we also tie it together so that people can see the relevance between each of them and how it sort of, like I say, ties together. Um, and uh, each of the modules do have uh, provide an opportunity for people to take a quiz or a practice test so that you can get some feedback as a student as to how you are doing in terms of, um, you know, familiarity and, and, uh, and awareness of the content. So along the way, we are delivering the information. The student is getting feedback about the level of their their understanding of it and uh, that way they're better prepared to take the exam and also better prepared of knowing the areas where they really might have to lean in a bit on a on a particular topic like math <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> how, how to calculate square footage and how to calculate yeah. the area of a lot right yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, and you don't have to necessarily take them in order you don't have to take them in order, and that's the standaloneness of it. Um, is that a word? Yeah, I guess it is now. Uh, yeah. they, they do kind of stand alone, um, and so it doesn't have to be in any particular sequential order, but it does have to be each of them. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, the instructor certifies to the state that you have participated in 40 hours at least in total. Because back in the old, old, old days when I did this, if you missed class one, you would have to wait until all of the classes were done and they started another schedule. But Correct. here I could pop in maybe at class four. Uh, Brian, you did yours all out of order, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, they offered um, different schedules where if you missed uh, a certain class, you could take it and it would usually two or three weeks later. It wouldn't yeah. be like you'd have to wait the 14 weeks or whatever it is. Yeah, because you had a choice of going like every Thursday night or going to another location on Saturday. And so if he had if he had missed class two on Thursday, he could take it two Saturdays later or something like right. that. Yeah, sure. Right. And the, the appraisal yeah. and taking the appraisal courses has been on this this type of route for at least five or 10 years now. So uh, when I need to go renew my, get my continuing ed for appraisal, it's very easy. I just log in, like I said, any time at night, take the course, t take the test, get my credits and submit them. Yeah, you used to have to go to like a hotel ballroom for an of entire course. day and, exactly, and exactly. be with a bunch of other crabby appraisers. <laughs> right. And then if I have to, and I'm doing it for like fun. New Hampshire and Massachusetts, you know, that's twice as much fun. So, oh, um, I keep hearing that the license test is intimidating. I keep hearing people tell me that they're, you know, they're very anxious about taking the test. Yeah, so um you know, I think that there's a certain uh, level of anxiety around test taking with some people anyway. Sure. And we have, to, we have to sort of, and that's another benefit of being in, in the pre-license and having the ability to have what I'll call practice tests along the way, uh, we hope will minimize, if not eliminate, that anxiety. Because let's face it. You know, if, if we're taking an, a test and we're, we're filled with anxiety, uh, whether we know the information or not, we may not select the right answer. So um, that's, that's really why we want to make sure that we take the time to, to explain the content thoroughly and then also provide the opportunity to, to uh, you know, take practice exams. And candidly, just like anything or most things in our lives, we, we oftentimes will learn more from our, quote, mistakes of or, course, yeah. or hiccups than we do from, from getting the answer right every time. So, um, you know, there's a benefit to, to, you know, those practice tests where you, uh, you, you know where you might need to do some work and you start to get comfortable with the explanation uh, as a result of that. So, 
And I think our module number 10 is a wrap up and overview. And Correct. Yes. You know, so that yeah. people can go back and focus on things they're not really confident in. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's, again, the benefit of, of doing uh, that wrap up uh, at the end, because we can really focus on the things that, uh, that are, are still a little bit fuzzy with folks. And, you know, what I always say is if you've got a question about it, probably someone else does in the class who might just not be as, as brave as you to <laughs> right. uh, you know, raise your hand. Yeah. And so uh, it's a benefit to everyone. And a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll look to the other students and say, well, Jennifer, do you want to explain what, what's your perspective? How would you answer that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, when we have to say it, um, that helps to solidify it in our minds. It does. It really does. Um, so how, how do people learn more or how do people sign up if they're interested in, yeah. in taking uh, a class? So if you go to uh, the Real Estate Learning Group, uh, dot com. Uh, the the acronym is Trelig, so T R E L G dot com. And uh, at the very top of the banner, you will see um, uh, New Hampshire uh, listed. And there's uh, a drop down menu that says pre license and continuing ed. And it's just a matter of a couple of clicks, and uh, and you can be be registered. Uh, we do send out uh, no, uh, reminder notifications regularly before the class begins, just to make sure people are still okay with the schedule. Um, and, uh, you know, we provide a link for the materials so that people are, again, able to get the materials immediately. Now, now some folks prefer getting the, the bound book and so forth, and that's an option as well. So you can order the book directly, um, or you can get it in a download. Again, technology influence uh, yep. at work. Uh, get it in a download. Some people like to keep it electronically. Some people like to have it electronically and also, you know, in their hand. And so all of those things are, are <laughs> yeah. available. So. Um, as somebody who's paying college tuition on a monthly basis for our daughter, um, what's the cost? <laughs> so, so the cost uh, for the course, uh, the cost is three seventy nine per per person, um, and then the book, depending upon you know how you're going to receive the materials, uh, the book, the physical book is a, an additional charge directly from uh, the publisher, or you can get it through a link, and there is a, a, a minimal cost for that. Uh, we are offering uh, sort of as an as a, uh, enticement, if you will, in terms of encouragement to, to, uh, to get into um, the pre-licensed class, a coupon so that for the January class, which begins January 11th, okay. um, it will be $299. So it's a it's a coupon worth you know eighty dollars for the for the folks who want to make that commitment for January. Well, nice. that is substantially cheaper than the two hundred fifty thousand dollars I'm going to pay for my daughter's <laughs> education. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she yeah. better support us in her old age. Is all I can say. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the return on investment of that uh, that two ninety nine in terms. Of of income is going to be uh, much better than uh, some of the tuition returns that I've been hearing about. Yes, so. Oh, sure, yeah. exactly. And you can yeah. jump right into right into work and start making money pretty much, you know, in a few months, right? Yeah, um, you know, it it really is a situation where uh, these days, you know, back in I'll use your term back in the old days um, when I first got into real estate, just after Christopher Columbus landed, <laughs> you know, the the cycle of of getting engaged, you know, we used to say, you know, um, it would take six months. And now we're seeing that really people can get engaged and that's code for be involved in a transaction in, you know, 30, 60 days, um, you're, you're in a transaction. And, and, and that's so, so income important. starts to flow much more quickly. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, again, technology and the effect efficiencies of everyone in the, the home services business. Loan officers can can get approvals and funding much more quickly, title companies, so forth, because of the efficiencies of technology. So, you know, the cycle now is really, I mean, we have we have transactions that'll close 
in less than 30 days. And, you know, back then, back when, that was unheard of. Oh, 60 of. days minimum, yeah. 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 And, and the other thing so, is, is I think some people are, are concerned that when they're, they're new, um, that it's going to be a struggle. And certainly you do need to get the ball rolling. But, I, but I'll say when I was new, I had so much time and energy to focus on my clients um, now I've got the knowledge and I have some other advantages, but the time and the energy, you know, I've, I've got a, a bigger base of people that I am taking care of. Whereas when you're new, you can just give somebody unbelievable service. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And you know, the other thing that we're seeing, uh, and, and it's not company specific, it really is industry specific, is that when we look at at the folks who are the leaders, if you will, in terms of transactions, the the people who are doing uh, business at a at a at a pretty good clip or at a high level, uh, I used to call them, you know, the the folks on stage. Well, back in like I say in the '80s, the folks on stage were people who had you know 20, 25 years, thirty years in the business, and so all of a sudden you're thinking. You know, okay, that's kind of the criteria. I, I, I gotta, I gotta be in it that long to be on stage. And, and today, that's just not the case. When you look at publications like Inman News, uh, your own company's, you know, awards thing, you know, people are are doing a a good deal of business, and their tenure is, you know, two, three, right. five years. Right. And, you know, it's not a get rich quick kind of thing. There is really no silver bullet. Those are the folks who are putting uh, the time in, putting the, the effort in based upon great uh, systems and, and, um, and their commitment to that. So it really can be a, uh, a very substantial career reward-wise, as well as being in a position to, to really help consumers make a great real estate decision um, you know, regardless of the market. So and we it's are, changed a lot about that, about the whole tenure thing. Yeah. And we are an industry that, um, that is aging. And so we need some new blood. What? <laughs> I know. <laughs> As we talk about the eighties several uh, times here, right? Exactly. <laughs> I didn't realize you were going to go there with me, yeah. but I guess, yeah, I guess so. It's supposed to be nice to the guests. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and to, and to even go back to my restaurant analogy, I, I very often will see that if if a, a newer agent to the business does makes it to that two year level, then they've got the momentum to keep going. Sure, um, definitely. You know, so definitely. so um, it's a yeah. it's a unique type of business, and there's a lot of different roles. You don't have to be a commission salesperson. Uh, That's you, right. You can be a stager. You can be um, an assistant. Uh, you. You can do yeah. property management. You can decide you want to go into appraisal or mortgage or, or any variety of different roles. Yeah, and and you know the presence, the the real surge in what I'm going to call agent teams has has now provided an opportunity for people who you know are are really interested in in being on the service end of the industry. Who, right. but maybe maybe don't want to be or aren't confident in the lead generation element. And so now, you know, people might be focused on a specialty like a, being a buyer specialist where all they do is work with buyers and, and those are generated a lot of times through, through listings. And so uh, it does provide a variety of roles, even even more so than what we we've, we've seen in the past, particularly because of the the uh, you know proliferation of agent teams. Yeah. yeah, you can be the person who handles the marketing on the team for all of the listings. You can be the person that that walks the transaction from signed contract to closing, and yeah. and coordinates all of that. So there's roles for everybody. Um, yeah. and, and it all starts with getting your license. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It yeah. all starts there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Alan, for getting real with us about real estate school. Do you have anything you want to add? No. Uh, well, uh, whenever anybody asks me that, I always have something to add. So yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think as you said, this is a, this is a great, um, career, uh, pathway that, 
that can go in a variety of directions. And so we, I would just encourage uh, if you have an interest in it, uh, you know, give us a call. Uh, one thing that, that we think is important is uh, you mentioned it, Jennifer, you're one of the instructors. And we think it's important that the, the content, the information is delivered by people who are actually selling real estate. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. you know, there's, there's so much practical knowledge that gets delivered as a result of that, that that's, to me, an important distinction when you're making the decision between schools um, is, you know, are they, are they, are the instructors practitioners? Because now you're getting, you know, up to date, current, uh, experiential knowledge in addition to the book knowledge. Yeah, I think that's important. very valuable. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, how far away is the puppy? Is there any chance we can see the puppy before we sign off here? Or? Oh my gosh! Yeah, she's uh, she's. Uh, I, I'm not sure where she is, but I'll tell you, Bernie's Mountain Dog and Poodle. What a great combination! Oh, she's okay. Great. All right. Yeah, burn a, a burn a doodle. A burn a doodle. So she's only going to be ninety pounds. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a straight up standard poodle. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. 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 You'll uh, have a ball. So, yeah. they're, so they're, they're fun and so well behaved. Okay. I'm not going to be up at three in the morning to no. take the dog out. No, no. not going to no, happen. Set your alarm for six. Okay. There you go. All right. I can do that. Thank you so much, Alan. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Alan. having me. Thanks All right. Take me. care. Great talking to you guys. Great to see you. Thank and, you. See you. And to our listeners, um, please like subscribe and share. And if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, we'd very much appreciate it. If you'd switch over to the audio version, which is available <laughs> on iTunes or Stitcher or, um, um, Spotify, Spotify or whatever your favorite podcatcher is. All right. Music courtesy of the Eric Lindbergh Trio. Please visit his website at www.ericlindberghworld.com. Jennifer and Brian are licensed to practice real estate in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Brian is also a certified general appraiser in New Hampshire. They are not lawyers, accountants, home inspectors, or therapists. Real estate customs and rules may be different in your area. Each Keller Williams Realty office is independently owned and operated. The realtor name is trademarked to members of the National Association of Realtors. If you are currently under contract with a real estate agent, this is not intended as a solicitation. Views expressed on this podcast by Jennifer may not be shared by Brian and vice versa, nor are they necessarily the views of Keller Williams Realty. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.